On this episode... I'm worried that the knee's not bending all the way. What's wrong with little Stevie? And will Audrey have any chance of fixing her? Wow. The way he's going is going to end up going deaf. Poor Bruno needs radical surgery. It's time to get in there and get very serious for him. Hey, Bert. Oh, my goodness. And Olivia's deeply concerned little Egbert could have pneumonia. It's really 50-50 whether he could make it through. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. I can depend on you. <laughs> In Sydney, Audrey has come to check on a doting mum and her recent litter of eight pups. Look at all the puppies! Hi, Mama. Hi, Deb. How are you? Hi, Audrey. This is puppy heaven. It is puppy they heaven. They are so cute. Hello. It is puppy heaven. Oh, my goodness. I'm covered in puppies. Could it get any better? But despite their youthful energy, Deb is extremely concerned about one of Maggie's playful eight-week-olds. Stevie? Yeah? What I noticed, this leg was a bit stiff. Yeah. And it kind of concerned me that maybe there's been an injury there. The Mastiff Cross family of nine was saved from a pound by Deb, who runs her own dog rescue charity. Oh, look how cute she is. When I saw Maggie and her pups in the pound, I thought I can't leave a mama dog and her babies in the pound. It's no place for a mama dog and her babies. All right, shall we get her on the table and take out you. that leg? That would be amazing. All right, let's do it. The key will do nicely. Yeah, you can see it's quite swollen. That's what I actually noticed, that yeah. um, it was a bit stiff and then it looked like it was thickened. Yep. And that really concerned me. Her hip movement's great, but the That's knee yeah. is yeah. pretty stiff. Like when she sits, it's not bending the same yeah. as the other one. Even though Stevie runs around and plays around relatively normally, when she's standing there, I can feel that limited range of movement. Yeah, so she's lost a little bit of that flexion on the knee, mm. which fits with a possible mm. fracture that's a bit towards the knee. Audrey fears Stevie might have a broken thigh bone and there could be permanent damage to the leg. It's okay, I'm worried that the knee's not bending all the way. And near the knee joint, there's a growth plate going around there. So if that is damaged, I'm very concerned how this is going to go as she grows. If she has got a fracture there, she's still using it quite well and it's healing it is. relatively straight. Yes. What I'd really like to do is have an image of that bone. Okay. Let's take an x-ray, find out where the possible fracture is. Yes. Is it across a growth plate? Yeah. Is it healing relatively straight? Yeah. And then I guess we'll make a plan going forward. It may not be surgery now, yeah. but only time will tell. She's a little fighter, this one. She is, most okay. definitely. Oh, buddy, it's okay. I know, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry. You're gonna be all fixed up. Good boy. In Sydney, Maggie has brought her four-year-old Legato Bruno to see Rob for surgery to fix a persistent problem. Hey Maggie, hey, how are you? Good things, how are you? Good to see you. And poor Bruno, you're such a young dog for all these problems, isn't he? Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> you used to love me before when you were little. Bruno's been in so many times with ear problems. And it's always the same thing, he's really sensitive, they're really painful, and he's shaking his head, scratching his ears. Well, Come Bruno, here, Bruno, just, it's your mum's there, your mum's there. Okay, good, okay. good boy, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. I know, right. they're good all so boy. sore now. Ever since he was a little puppy, he gets a lot of build-up of the fur in his ears. It is upsetting because uh, I don't want to have to come to the vets all the time for something that he's in pain with. Yeah, they're all clogged up. I mean, he's hardly got an ear canal now. The, the ear canal's just blocked up. It's just full of hair again, and that, that doesn't yeah. ventilate. Yeah. That's why he's having so much problems. Yeah. And it then catches a bit of dirt, a bit of wax, and the yeah. infection and inflammation. And they get very sore, buddy. 
the way he's going, he's going to end up going deaf. You know, it's been every few weeks he's had to come in for his yeah. ears to be done. It's Poor not sir. fair. He's been very brave, aren't you? You're a good boy. When I think about it, like I'm, it's very sad. It was only like about a week ago that we were here, so it does upset me. Bruno is very beautiful, loving, happy dog. Good boy, Bubby. You good boy. Yeah. Bruno is just wonderful company for me because my children have all grown up now. So it's just me and him at home. So he's great company and we're very close. So look, I think we'll go with what we've planned. It's a lateral ear resection. This is a long-term surgery. Yeah. It'll be you know, a few hours of surgery itself. Okay. After four years of constant vet visits, Maggie and Rob hope today's operation to reconstruct Bruno's ears will provide a permanent solution. Yep. His ear canal, you know, instead of going down and having a right angle bend, his ear canal will come straight out. Okay. So it drains okay. easier and oh. it's all open to the ear, it ventilates okay. and it'll help quite a lot. And oh. he'll need on both sides, I'm afraid, yeah, because okay. it's just been happening too often for him. Okay. Okay, too much. And that will make a big difference. Like big, in the big future. difference, yeah. yeah. All right, Bruno. He's a lovely, lovely dog. So, with this, hopefully, he'll feel much more comfortable and uh, a lot less visits to the vet. See you later, buddy. Good. You're going to be much better. Okay, love you. Love you. Thank you so much, Thank Rob. You. Bye. You Thank you. Bye. Ready? You can be brave. In Sydney, Audrey is bringing eight-week-old puppy Stevie in for X-rays on a suspected broken leg. Okay. Come meet Bree. Hello. Hi, Stevie. This is little Stevie girl. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Hi, baby. She's such a good girl. And we're X-raying her right hind leg today because we think there's a fracture there. You can see it's quite swollen compared to the other one. Yeah. And even though she seems to be using it and walking on it well, she's actually got a reduced range of motion there. It's just amazing that she's got any muscle development there. So somehow, miraculously, she's still using the leg. Yeah, she's... It's a bit of a mystery as to what's going on with Stevie's leg. Could be a fracture, there's a big swelling there, and I can't bend that leg the way I should. Oh, and you can see there. See how she tucks that one in? And then she can't bend that, so it just mm. kind of hangs to the side. Audrey's main concern is if eight-week-old Stevie has a broken thigh bone involving the all-important growth plate near the knee. Oh, yes. Yes. I know it's scary, my love. A growth plate is a part of the bone that is responsible for new bone cells being laid down. So if that area is damaged, potentially bone can't be produced, and so she'll have a stunted leg compared to all the other legs. And that's going to be terrible for a large breed dog like this. Time for your x-rays. We'll do it really quick, I promise. Oh, I know, you got a sore leg. I know, it's okay. Next step, diagnostic x-rays. That's gonna tell us exactly how those bones are looking on the inside. That's all right, Good, Stevie. Thank you. You're a strong baby. Well, now that she's actually asleep and relaxed, we can actually have a better feel. And then what I'm worried about... Oh, wow. That's a big difference. I'm pulling her leg straight. Big so there's shortening of the leg already. Wow. I'm always worried with puppies with fractures because that leg could potentially grow abnormally. And if that leg is shorter than the other one, long term that's going to cause hip issues, back issues, whole bag of problems. So that makes me worried because it tells me that the fracture's near the knee joint and near the knee joint is a growth plate. So more concerns, we'll wait and see what those x-rays say. Okay, ready? Yep. Alright, x-rays. Alright Bree, got some images. Alright, let's have a look. Wow. Let me just grab the other views. So that's our right leg. And that's our left leg, and there's a big fracture across mm. here, and it's kind of healed like this. It goes just down the middle of the shaft. Yeah. And a few, maybe, commonly used smaller fractures just distal to it. Yeah. The x rays confirm Stevie has a severely broken femur. You yeah, baby. Audrey is now anxious to see if the critical growth plate has been damaged. 
So that's the growth plate of the normal yep, leg. That's it. And then we bring up the right leg. You can see it's just escaped it. Wow. So I suspect really? it's like a clean break with a little bit of crumbling below it or comminution below yeah. it. Pretty lucky puppy. Having a look at these x-rays, you can definitely see a big fracture across her thigh bone, but I'm pleasantly surprised that even though there is a fracture there, it hasn't gone through her growth plate. I was really worried that that leg was a bit shorter than it should be, and potentially that growth plate was affected, but it's relatively good news. The reason why that leg is shorter is just because it hasn't healed like this. It's healed a bit like that. Yeah, so that's so shorter totally stunted. Yeah. So we yeah. get her to continue to kind of use that weight on that leg and mm. weight there, it will start to lay bone out and hopefully slightly straighten it out a bit, yeah. but only time will tell. The fractures cause the bone to heal on a bit of an angle and that explains why the leg is shorter. But with time, we could potentially correct that. How did you do that? It's a pretty tough bone to break too. Moving forward, Stevie still got a lot of work to do. You're a good girl, Stevie. Let's have a look inside his mouth. Spin him around. At Sydney's Small Animal Specialist Hospital, Sash, Olivia is treating 13-month-old guinea pig, Egbert. Did Mum say he was eating this morning? Mm. Mm. So Egbert's owners brought him in because they're really worried. His owners have heard some respiratory noises, so some wheezing and some grunting coming from his airways. Egbert, oh my goodness, you're a brave boy. But Olivia can't get a good look at her patient's airways because there's too much food in the way. Guinea pigs store food in their cheek pouches, which is normal, but for me, this is a problem because I can't get in there and I just can't see what I need to see. I think we need to let him have a little bit of a break, have another look later. Mm -hmm. So what I need to do is just give Eggy a little time for that food to kind of get washed down into his digestive tract and then I can have another look in an hour or two. Hi guys, how are you going? While Egbert digests his leftovers, okay. Olivia wants to learn more from his owners Daryl and Eleni. We noticed he had like a little bit of kind of crustiness around his eyes. Okay. So just this morning we fed him, mm -hmm. everything was fine and I heard this noise, sound like a kind of grunting, hooting kind of sound. Yeah. Normally doesn't make any sound at all. I mean, I'm a bit anxious, but hopeful. I'm guessing it's probably like some kind of chest infection or something. Yeah, and, and um, Sash here is one of the few hospitals that actually has expertise with small animals like this, so I feel hopeful. His backstory was they found him in a cardboard container in a park when he was only like a old. week old or oh. thirty days old. And so, so it was him hard. and his brother, and so when we saw them at the pet store... So they, they'd them. been there a while? They mm. hadn't had a home, ever. I was lucky they found you guys then. The reason I was driven to be a bird and exotics vet is people forget how important these guys are compared to dogs and cats, and I really want to be able to provide the same kind of level of care to these animals that dogs and cats get. Beautiful boy. So I think that there is probably something going on with his upper respiratory tract. So, yep. you know, nasal cavity, back of his throat, sinuses, all yep. that kind of area. But with guinea pigs, that can really quickly progress yeah. to pneumonia and that can be very serious. What I do think would be the best thing ideally for him is to get some x-rays so we can have a look at his chest and have a look at everything and see if there's any evidence of pneumonia. I am worried that this has come on very suddenly. If he does have pneumonia, it's going to require intensive care. He's going to need to stay in hospital with supportive therapies like oxygen and antibiotics. And um, it's really 50-50 whether he could make it through. See you later, buddy. Good boy. See you later, Kington. All right, little man. I'll give you a call bit later. In Sydney, four-year-old Bruno is being readied for surgery to fix ongoing blockages in his ears. You good? 
Rob will reconstruct the canals in both the Legato's ears, hoping it will put an end to the painful inflammation and infections caused by repeated blockages. There we go. I'm getting worried because he's been in so many times, the normal things, the normal drops and tablets and swabs and everything else that we've done hasn't worked long term for this dog. So it's time to get in there and get very serious for him. Thumb forceps, please. Andy. Thank you. He's going to be suffering this for the rest of his life if we don't do something. And that's what we're hoping for, that we get resolution to the problem. Now, you don't always, but I've never had a case where I haven't had improvement. And so what we've done is we've placed the artery forceps right down the ear canal, and now we're cutting down the side of those forceps we're removing the lateral part of that canal. We actually don't detach it from the body. This is the trickiest part because what we need to do is keep as much of this lateral canal as we can, literally as a, a splashboard for the ear canal to come out of. The splashboard, as such, is the lateral part of the ear canal. Instead of just cutting it away and throwing it away, I pull it down and allow it to aid in the drainage of that canal. You're coming down to here, right down. Pull you down, pull this up. Yeah, I guess he's going to get a facelift because it, the skin does get pulled up a lot. But dogs have very mobile skin, very mobile skin. And now it's an exercise in suturing, trying to get it all in the position that we want. Each suture has to be put in, you know, just pretty precise or it won't heal. Bruno requires dozens of stitches. Last one. As Rob completes the successful reconstruction of the young dog's right ear. Very happy with this ear. As you can see, there's the ear canal there. Just when it comes down, it'll allow air straight into the canal itself. Very happy with it. So, half time, swap sides, the whistle blew. Two, three. Here we go, baby. Let's go. And I guess some 70 to 100 stitches in the other side. I didn't count. And believe it or not, the ears are not symmetrical. So I'm prepared to find an entirely different canal in this ear. Go. Stop. Get that skin back there. As Rob starts work on Bruno's left ear. A bit more trouble with it than I'd like. He immediately faces a major challenge. It can't be that different. We are starting from scratch. Are you ready? I'm going to go down around the bum here. Mm -hmm. Little pinch. Oh, you are brave. At Sash in Sydney, Olivia is sedating Egbert the guinea pig so she can x-ray him to check if he has pneumonia. Good boy. If Egbert does have pneumonia, that's really not good news because that is a lot harder to treat than an upper respiratory infection. Okay. In guinea pigs, pneumonia can often be life-threatening. When I listen to his lungs, it does sound a little bit harsh. It doesn't sound crackly as if there's disease in the lungs. All right, x-ray. What I'm really hoping to see is nice black triangle where the lung fields are. And what that tells me is that there's air in the lungs. And if there's air in the lungs, then there isn't fluid, there isn't pus, and I can rule out pneumonia. This is his heart down here, so that's looking pretty good, pretty normal size to me. You can see this really nice black sharp triangle, so just here, and that is his lungs. So I'm pretty happy that it's pretty unlikely that we've got anything going on with the chest, and more likely that his symptoms are coming from his upper respiratory tract up here, but I can't see anything obvious on x-rays that is causing any alarm bells for me, which is good. So that makes me really happy. Now that we've ruled out pneumonia, what we're gonna do is we're going to send him home on some medications to help clear his upper respiratory tract infections. Very good boy. 
a relieved Olivia still wants to do blood tests to make sure there's nothing seriously wrong with Eggy before she sends him home. Slowly. Very good boy. Better get mum in, let her know the news. Yep. Where's mum? All right, let's get your mummy. In Sydney, Audrey is about to tell Stevie's carer, Deb, that the tiny puppy she rescued from a dog pound has a broken leg and an uncertain future. It was a bit of anxious wait, and I guess there's a certain amount of, even though you can't be watching them 24 hours a day, there's a certain amount of guilt that, you know, oh my goodness, how could have this possibly happened in my care, so that weighs heavily as well. Hi, Mama. Here's Aww, Stevie. Baby. She's been such a good girl. Hi, precious one. We're still Hi, a bit sleepy because we're waking up from anaesthetic. What's the matter? I know. Hi, <laughs> baby. Now you want to give Mama a cuddle and we'll pop into the console and I'll show you those x rays we've got. Okay. Come on, let's go. Yes. And you can see just right yes. bam slap in the middle there, wow. there's the fracture. But what I'll point out now is the growth plate, which is the part that we were most concerned about, because that part, if yes. it's affected, it will affect how she grows oh, and the length the of that limb. You can see that's the growth plate there as well. Oh, so it may good. just be touching on this side, wow. but I don't think it's gone through. Very lucky. I'm feeling relieved. I think it's a better outcome than maybe I thought it would be. The growth plate still intact. That was my biggest concern. So growth plate, pretty much healthy. Now I've got to concentrate on getting her using the leg and physio to bend mm -hmm. that leg so that we can hopefully get that movement back. We're on our probably fourth or fifth week of healing. So she's got another week of healing and then we really want to concentrate on her using that leg properly. The fact that Stevie's a young pup and this fracture hasn't gone through her growth plate, we're actually pretty lucky because it means that as she's growing, we've got time on our side. She'll grow, she'll continue to lay down bone, and hopefully as she uses that leg, the bone will straighten out. I'm gonna show Mama some exercises. Okay, so we want to bend it so that this ankle yes. touches her bottom. So at the moment, you can see it gets to about to here and it doesn't want to do yep. it anymore. I wouldn't keep forcing it, but I'd yes. push it to its limit comfortably. Yep. And then what I do is I'd straighten it yep. and then push it again. Yeah. We can tell from the x-rays that the fracture is pretty old. So at this stage, there's no point really pinning it or plating it or even splinting it. It's already starting to heal. So the main aim of the game now is to get it to strengthen and get it to lay down bone in a straight manner. So we might get you to give it a go. Okay. So okay. holding onto her foot. On your hand. Maybe this way. Yep. And then pull to oh, extend. That's easy enough. Yep. And then slowly push back to her limit and just yep. a little bit of you tension beyond. Mm. So you can see where she's yeah, started where she to locks. feel yeah. it. Yeah, you can feel the, um, the stiffness in yeah. that. Even though Stevie's got a long way to go, with a carer like Deb, I'm confident she's going to get stronger mm. and that leg will heal. And I'm also confident that she's going to find a caring, loving home. Come on, Thanks. baby girl. Oh, okay. going home. Going home. Oh, it's been a big day. Your brothers and sisters. It's been a big your day. Your All right. Fair mummy. I'm feeling really positive and really hopeful, you know, that she can make a full recovery and go on to find her family. There will definitely be someone out there that falls in love with her and if she's born the underdog, she doesn't have to stay the underdog. Hey, I'm your human mummy. <laughs> Come on, baby. This one's going straight down, so we've already got a bit of a difference here. In Sydney, Rob has successfully reconstructed four-year-old Bruno's right ear. It can't be that different. It is that different. But surgery on the dog's left ear looks like being a huge challenge. Tougher one, isn't it? It's tough. Try that. Okay. Yeah. It's common for many dogs that the canal that goes downwards first and then across and so everything's supposed to drain uphill. Well, I guess you know, nothing drains uphill. And it's quite amazing, such a big difference to the other ear canals. It just mean a slight adjustment, or a big adjustment actually, on where we cut and how we cut. Okay, there's 
that's the canal, and it's full of hair. So this black hole is the canal. And look at all this. We'll take it out now, which we've done over and over again, but it grows back. You can see why this would irritate him, because it's all that hair deep inside is going to be a great environment for bacteria and fungus to grow. And then that causes severe inflammation. It explains why it's been so sensitive to this dog all the time. When dogs get a, an ear problem that goes on a few times, it often becomes very chronic, very hard to get rid of. And Bruno's case, just producing a lot of hair. I don't see that a lot in Legato's, but in his case, he's producing a lot of hair in there all the time. Literally what we're doing is giving him a, a Brazilian in his ear. So getting rid of all the hair and muck will probably improve his hearing quite a bit. Okay, baby boy. That'll do. So now we start suturing. Just plenty of it. Probably about 80 to 100 to go on this one. Are you doing right? 110. That's good. It's nice and steady. It's been that right through. Despite all the challenges, Rob has managed to remodel Bruno's left ear. I'm looking right into the canal. It's looking at me, breathing a sigh of relief. I swear I can see this ear canal breathing. Certainly smiling at me. Both ears should now drain better, with problematic hair regrowth greatly reduced. So I'm happy this is all done. The surgery will make a massive difference to Bruno's quality of life. It'll make a new dog out of you. Whew. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It's gone well. So he goes into recovery now and he'll just wake slowly from his anaesthetic. So he'll be here for a few days just on pain relief. And I talk to them and they tell me when they're ready to go home. If, he's, if he settles, we won't. Put a knee collar on him. He's starting to look good and happy with him. He just don't want him to shake his head, of course, or scratch at his ears. Just hoping the tranquilizers and the painkillers will be enough for him. So there he goes. Good boy. You ready? Good boy. Little man. At Sash in Sydney, Olivia is about to reunite 13-month-old guinea pig Egbert with his caring owners Daryl and Eleni. Here we go. Who's that? Here we go, little Eggy. Oh, oh he's missed you, buddy. He's been such a good boy. Yeah. yeah. Olivia was initially worried Egbert might have pneumonia, but blood tests and x-rays confirmed he's suffering from a treatable respiratory tract infection. So I've got the stuff for the nebulizer and I've got his medications as well. Respiratory tract wise, I've got a couple of medications. One is an antibiotic and the other one is a medication that's gonna help and break up the mucus in his respiratory tract. I'm really relieved there's no pneumonia. This is really good news for Eggy. So I'm sending him home with some antibiotics, some medications to help clear up the mucus, um, and we're also going to put him on vitamin C supplementation to support his immune system as well. All right, well, our man, little Mr. Eggy, is all good to go home, and then I will give you guys a call tomorrow and we'll touch base and see how he's going then. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Nice. Yeah, it sounds good. Really pretty good. He's breathing fine. He May seems like his old self. I mean, he seems a bit tired, but yeah, he seems good. Yeah, so hopefully nothing more in the medication. Mm. It's just all he needs and yeah, back to health soon. <laughs> oh, there's that little purr that I heard. Yeah, he's happy good, now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy to see Eggy going home today. You know, I was really worried about him when he first came in and I know his owners were really worried as well. So it's really lovely to see that he can go home. He's been reunited with his family. I love him very much. Bye, Eggy. Oh, I hope he feels better. Thank you. That's no, okay. You All right, you're very welcome. Bye, see ya. Six weeks after Bruno's surgery on both ears, Owner Maggie is overjoyed with how well the four-year-old is recovering. So Bruno is much better and he's not having trouble with his ears. He's a lovely, lovely dog. Very friendly with all the other dogs. Loves going to the dog park. Loves swimming, taking him to the dog beach and swimming pool. So he's great company. 
Now that Bruno's ears are no longer painfully clogged, the playful Legato certainly has a new lease on life. You good boy? You good boy? Yeah, you feel better? And little rescue dog Stevie also has a bright future. Her injured leg has healed well, and she's been adopted by a loving new family. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.